Good morning everyone, it is Saturday and I have an appointment with my acupuncturist which is honestly filling me with so much happiness. She's actually fitted me in on a Saturday which she doesn't normally do because I haven't seen her since January. Every time I've booked in, something to do with work has meant that I've have to, had to change it and that is not a good thing. I always say that you need to like prioritise your self-care bits and pieces and not even I am doing that. So um, she was really, really good to me. Um, and has fitted me in, so I'm very, very excited to go and see her. Um, I have some errands to run as well. I'm going to the Hello Petal pop-up. Um, I'm going to do some run, just run some errands for Ali to help him out. We also have the opportunity to go to our friend's house in Cambridge. Our friends are getting married next year, and um, yeah, we can go to their, they're having a barbecue in Cambridge, and so we have that option. There is also a, um, like, choir, singing at the stately home next door so we could go and watch that it's a charity thing i'm not too sure on how the day is going to pan out but one thing i think i might change about my saturdays moving forward is like book something in super early like whether it's a fitness class or something like that i would love to do that so that i know i've got to get up on the saturday because i have a tendency to take the mornings a bit too leisurely and this way I've got an appointment at nine o'clock, so I, um, I'm like up, I'm dressed, I'm ready to go and the world is my oyster. It's obviously not that way during the week, but on Saturdays I really do like that. I might have to do that a bit more. Obviously sometimes when you go out on a Friday you don't want to be getting up the next day or whatever, but yeah, I really, I always look at these little hacks to get me to do the things that I want that I find difficult. And if it means just booking something in, that's a good hack. I think. I have some new in pieces from Goelia because so many of you loved the items that I showed you last time and I think that you are going to love these pieces even more. Some of them you've already seen. I wore one of the dresses when we went for dinner with Annie's family which I loved. Um, I've got that in numerous other prints as well, uh, other silhouettes, that print in particular because it's such a gorgeous print. I've got some other bits and pieces as well. You also saw the dress that I wore in Ireland. Um, I've been showing you a few because I really, really enjoy their pieces. They basically kind of merge and are finding that happy balance. They really champion um, quality fabrics like cashmere, silk, worsted wool, um, and it's just, you just find these pieces and they, they really do walk that balance of making quality fabrics that are much, much better for the environment um more accessible and i think that that is such a fine line and it's it's so difficult but um i think that they have achieved such great things and they do such unique pieces as well um so i'm just going to get into it so rather than unboxing them with you i've got them freshly steamed so that you can see them looking beautifully i think that's far more quick and also helpful for you seeing how they actually would look once you've got them out of the packaging and styled up with the right pieces. So I can't wait to show you these. There's so many good pieces. And of course I have my 25% off discount code which is Lydia25 um, which you can put to use across the site and of course on the pieces that I'm showing you. So I will pop it on screen and in the description box as well. So let's try them on. Now this way, this shooting this way for shooting outfits is definitely the best in terms of lighting but I also know that lots of you enjoy seeing the fabrics in my room now so I've pushed my little um, bag stand to this corner so that you've got some of the fabrics in as well but this is the first outfit and I feel like this is something a little bit different for me which I kind of I'm like obsessed with because I feel so smart and elegant whilst also not feeling like I've got like everything on show it feels so wonderful and I've popped it with some really classic shoes classic accessories however there is a hat staring at me that I feel like this would just instantly oh my gosh stop it I'm literally just balancing this on my head but this as kind of an alternative dressed up outfit for an occasion I think is so nice the shorts are so comfortable I've got such a great amount of um, space in them and in all honesty, you could wear this dressed up or dressed down. I'm going to take the hat on off just because you can, you get the gist. And the detail up close as well. So you've got these beautiful champagne gold buttons with what looks like almost mother of pearl in there as well. Now, I find details like this really, really important. If this gold is too saturated, um, it just kills the whole vibe. Whereas this 
is the perfect saturation to go with existing accessories. This is like the perfect brunch outfit with the girls when you want to look nice, but you could also put flats with it. Um, I think this would look beautiful with some like summer walk style shoes as well, but you could even do really, really like cute plimsolls. Oh, this is adorable. I thought I was done. I wanted to see what it looked like open and I only had like a vest underneath. So I wanted to show something a little bit more elevated and it made me realize how perfect this is as like a bridal shower outfit or even just like a day before or a day after your wedding, something super, super chic. Like you could pop a beautiful satin bow in your hair. I've actually teamed this because I know I didn't show you it in my other video. Teamed it with the basque that I got back from the dry cleaners the other day from my wedding day. Now, sadly, my boobs no longer fill it. So um, that's sad, but <laughs> also lovely for me, but I think that this just looks so elegant. And I actually find it fits me on the shoulders just a little bit better, but you can obviously go for just a plain, like a plain basque, or you could just pop a vest top, maybe something nautical underneath if you wanted to wear it like this in the daytime and not do it sort of bridal, but I just had to show you it's styled both ways. And of course the jacket itself can be worn on its own. So if you wanted to pop some blue denim jeans with it or something like that, then you could. Again, I thought I was done. Clearly I'm not because I said something nautical and then I forgot that this was in my haul. Um, this is a nautical Breton stripe uh, top. This is made with lyocell and it's super breathable and it's fitted so beautifully. A nice retro square neck collar. Um, you can also obviously wear it like this. This with a pair of jeans as well, but just with the shorts on their own, I think is such a great combo. So I just had to show you this as well. I will link it down below, but this is a versatile piece. You'll wear this with denim, with white denim, blue denim, cream trousers. This is a good one to have as like a classic, classic basic because this Breton style, you know, Jean-Paul Gaultier made this iconic years and years and years ago. So this just isn't going anywhere as well. Stripes are always in fashion and this just fits the dream. This skirt completely stole my heart. I loved how different this felt in the print, but still so able to be classic. So this is like a map of the world print, which feels perfect for sort of travel vibes in spring, summer, but it is as light as a feather. Like it feels so luxurious on the skin, but also just teamed with a very simplistic classic shirt and some stripy shoes, a basket bag. This is 100% silk as well. And it is the finest silk I think I've ever touched. It feels incredible. There's also a little scarf that you can pop. Like if you just wanted to add a touch of this, maybe you've got like a, a full navy outfit on with a little like navy silk shirt dress or just a navy shirt dress in general, this would look beautiful. But also tied onto a bag, like my travel Hermes, that is gonna just give it such a different vibe. And it's something a bit different to like the nautical feel that you often get in summertime but still feels like travel chic. I, I love it. Their pieces are so incredible. And I love that there's such beautiful fabrics to have in there, but this is a good little basic if you're just wanting to add something to an outfit. I think I might try and pop it on with something navy now just to show you what I'm talking about. Cause I don't know if I'd go like, well maybe you could. A little touch of it in your hair. It feels very matchy matchy and I kind of like it. I kind of like it in the hair as well. With the skirt, it feels like a finished outfit. This is like I'm going um, sipping wine around a city somewhere in Italy. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. So adorable. It's not a navy dress, this is a black dress with white sort of ivory piping and stunning pearl buttons. This has such an old time, almost Dior feel to it that I am obsessed. Um, it's a mix, the fabric is a mix of like tencel, silk, cotton, and it just feels so lightweight whilst also being knitted. This is a great like in-between day, like today, it's an in-between day. You don't really know what to wear because the sun's coming out, but it's also a little bit chilly. Um, and this just looks so put together and so considered as a piece, like you know that you're picking something beautiful, but still comfortable, and you know that you're gonna look good in it. That's the main thing for me, but I love it. You can also pop this with ballet flats, or if you wanted to put it with um, like slides, some beautiful leather slides or something like that, but this is such 
a great fit, style, shape, gorgeous. This dress is the 100% silk dress and this is the showstopper for me. It is so gorgeous. Like the print, I know I've already worn this so much on my channel already. Well, I've worn the other one. I love the color. I love the shape of the dress. It's really, really elegant and easy to wear, comfortable. It's got movement in your arms as well, which is super important for me. It's no good looking good and feeling uncomfortable. And this is the perfect sort of day dress. This is like garden party vibes, wicker basket bag. Um, you could go open toe. I just love my Emmy London shoes. Again, just super classic and it comes in a few different styles as well. So this is the dress that I think is really quite something. This is a mix of lyocell and linen. So really comfortable. It almost feels like a jersey. So it's super soft on your skin, first and foremost. Second of all, it has two different straps. Now you can wear both of the straps together if you want to. So if I just show you the way that it can be worn. This is how I think it's kind of intended to be worn. But for me, this is a dress that can be worn like a multitude of different ways. So this is the first way. My favorite way to wear this was the way that I had it originally. So this way, the reason why you can do this is because the elastic on this particular uh, sleeve is super taut. So it just looks like you've got a frill around the bust and looks wonderful. Um, so this is my favorite way, it's the most secure way. But if you're in the garden and you want something strapless, you can also take these straps down I mean, in four ways, maybe, because this is quite a cute way to wear it too. But you can take the straps down, very quick way of doing it, but tuck them in, and you've got a little bandeau as well. This is a eucalyptus print, and it is incredibly intricate and so whimsical without being too intense. But basically, the, the eucalyptus is a real um, significant plant in Australia. The symbolic meaning of the eucalyptus is um, like gratitude and gift, and it's, it, I think it translates to a gift from the earth as well, which I love. So I wanted to share that with you. So I'll link this one in the description box down below as well. I'll link everything down there. My code is Lydia25 if you wanted to pick any of these up. There's so much more on the website as well. And um, I think just look at the, the fabrics and things like that of the things that you like. The one thing I wanted to show you a bit more up close though was this, um, was this print scarf because it's the colours that they've got in it that makes it so incredibly timeless and beautiful. This has like little touches of orange, tan, taupes, butterscotch, and then that classic navy. Oh, it's so good. This is such a great just add-on piece. If you're looking for a silk scarf, good quality, really great price point, but something a bit different as well. Time to get on with the day because I've got an appointment to be at very, very soon and I need to brush my hair. <laughs> I have had the loveliest start to my Saturday because my acupuncturist, who I haven't seen since January, she managed to get me in on a Saturday, which I'm incredibly, incredibly grateful for. And she did all of my favorite things and something new as well. So she did um, Moxa, which is like this smoking, like Ujimi flip, which I love. And then, um, oh, I don't know how I, oh, there we go. I'm guessing I'm following this car. What a bizarre turn of events here. Oh, wow. Desmond J. Smale, sales restoration and servicing of Aston Martins past and present. Wow. Sorry, I'm in Olney at the moment. This is where my um, acupuncturist is and it's the most beautiful little village and I um, never get to explore. However, are they letting me go? Thank you. Thank you. It's very kind of them to let me go. Um, yes, and now I'm heading to the Hello Petal pop-up, which I'm really looking forward to, but I'll tell you about that in a second. Anyway, she did Moxa on me, which I love, and she just did a little, like, cleanse and things like that. But then, just before I was leaving, she was like, do you want to pull a card? And I was like, I've never pulled a card before. And I pulled the Wild Woman, which, honestly, I was like, stop it. Because you ask a question, basically, to yourself, and then, oh, the little sausage dog. The little chocolate no red sausage dog um yeah so anyway um i pulled the wild woman i haven't read the significance of it but um when i tell you i i, I have told you but 
my acupuncturist is is human sunshine like she is a living breathing sunshine person and she even got me a gift she got me um some palo santo and a little dish from my greenhouse so i'm definitely going to be uh, burning some of that later on i wanted to do my calligraphy later on this evening in um, the greenhouse and that is what i plan to do so i'm going to the hello petal like pop up but um this is like her new office now you're probably going to recognize this office because this is the same studio she's basically taken over the studio um that used to belong to my um, interior designer who liquidated, which is obviously awful. Um, and so now um, she has this beautiful space and I've seen how she's been decorating. She doesn't actually know that I'm definitely coming. I told her that I would come and then she messaged me yesterday and she was like, oh, are you still coming? And I didn't manage to get back to her. And I also didn't know how long my acupuncture session was gonna be. And now I've got out, I'm like, oh, I can actually go so I'm heading there now however I can't remember the address and it's kind of in the middle of nowhere so I'm getting myself to the rough vicinity and then I'm hoping that I'm gonna be able to pull over and find the address without having to message her um, so yeah that's my plan of action for the day but hopefully I can give you a little tour I think there might be other people there I'm not too sure um, I don't know who she's like invited or anything but I'm really looking forward to it I don't know whether to go and have a mooch around Woburn Lots of car chat at the moment. However, I didn't get to talk to you when I was at the pop-up because it was so busy. I am so happy for her. Oh my gosh, it looked gorgeous. And literally people were just buying so much. Um, so basically she's gonna be doing like pop-ups um, like I think every month where you can come down and she's also going to be doing um, like workshops as well which I think will be really cool because sometimes she obviously sells on her website which I just love but um, it's hard to like know how many to buy and like styling things up and Gemma just has an amazing eye for these things anyway and so um, yeah I, I definitely think that if you're in the local area or you're looking for sort of a lovely day it's at such a lovely little location um, and it's also just so much fun like Gemma and I do it all the time on my channel and it's just so much fun so um, and then at the end of it it's such a like gratification that you experience because you're potting things up which is just therapeutic in itself and then you just place them around your home and they look wonderful um, so I bought a few bits and pieces that I thought were really really lovely that she had and um, now I'm heading home for a Saturday in the greenhouse. This is my best scenario, okay? I, I can't even believe this has happened. So, Ali has reminded me that I am not having an afternoon in my greenhouse at all. We are going to his friend's barbecue in Cambridge. His friend, his girlfriend is now my friend. And um, this is my dream scenario because Ali is going away tomorrow, which means he has to drive, which means I get to be a lady of leisure and drink all of the wine with all of the girls. Mm. Fantastic. So I'm gonna pick Caitlin some sweet peas and this is just the best. I've also got to do this though whilst Ali gets ready. So I ordered these things on Amazon because we have these, um, this cup and saucer plant that's growing up our house. And despite our neighbor telling us that it would self support, it has not done that. Um, I think it's the brickwork. So what I'm going to do is use these little leafy things 
that you just stick to the wall because it's obviously an annual so it won't come back year on year and it isn't evergreen so yeah I'm gonna pop these on and it should I've just tried one and it, it worked so I'm gonna support the the vines and make it look really beautiful on the house got these from Amazon Yes, Lommy. So as you can see, I've just popped one there for this vine. Um, the good thing about this is, is it means it's not gonna damage the brickwork. So when this plant does eventually die back um, in late summer, autumn time, um, we can just take the stickers off and hopefully reuse them. But it means that I'm gonna get this all nice and strung up because it has absolutely transformed how this flank of the house looks, despite with obviously all of this bed looking so wonderful this is what i've always wanted so i think i'll definitely buy this kind of um uh trailing plant every year and plant it here oh good morning monsieur sausage good morning i mean we do have the ivy there which has started to grow as well bonnie memo hello 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 with all the dogs. <laughs> oh my gosh, pure comedy gold. That's one of those moments where I'm like, I wish I caught that on camera. <laughs> Come, Buggy Boo! Come, Buggy! Where's Bolly Moo? Yes! Come on, Bolly Moo! Yes! Wow, I can't believe how different it looks. So much better. I honestly want to get this going all the way up um, because this is supposed to have big, beautiful purple flowers. Back in the car again. I'm gonna call this the Car Chronicles. Um, I'm actually running an errand for Ali now because he's got a trip in the morning, which means um, he is frantically packing so that we can do something this evening. But we may also, there's a concert at the stately home that's next door. And I said to Ali, I really wanted to go and he's obviously got to pack. So I'm, I'm going to pick up his dry cleaning for him and uh, we're gonna kind of go from there because he needs to obviously be packed, but also um, have some downtime as well. So the vines are all strung up. Unfortunately, my loot from Hello Petal is still in the, the car. I haven't put it in the greenhouse yet. Gemma will be having kittens. Um, but yes, they're still in the car because I haven't actually had a chance to get them out. I've changed my outfit as well. I'm back in my Laura Piana um, shirt dress because um, I thought it'd probably be a bit more appropriate to wear to a garden party, if that's where we end up going. But um, we shall see. I'm just heading to Northampton Town Centre, which is not somewhere that we often go. We like live smack bang in the middle of um, Northamptonshire and Buckinghamshire. And um, Northampton is not a place that we end up going a lot in terms of like necessities. Um, the train links aren't as good, uh, the shopping isn't as good, so yeah, we just don't end up going there that often. But Ali is very particular about his dry cleaning and uh, they also do his tailor like tailoring there as well. So anyway, that's where I'm heading. So I went and picked up Ali's bits and I picked him up. Um, basically, I found this, um, I think I got a few clips. If I didn't, I apologize. But there's this cheese shop in Northampton that has been, I thought, had always been there, but someone told me that it closed down. Well, I went to the street. It's like Giles Street in Northampton. It's probably the only street in Northampton that is remotely, this sounds really awful, but lovely. Like Northampton has such rich history. 
but because of the complications with its uh, council, it really hasn't been looked after as a, as a town and it's so sad. But there's just this row of shops right at the end of Giles Street where they have um, a specialist coffee blend house and a cheese shop that also does like artisanal foods and things like that. And I walked up there and it was still there, so I went in, the, the machine, the, the, um, the coffee shop, the coffee roasting place has its own roaster in the shop, so it smells incredible. It's very like um, rustic and beautiful, but I picked up Ali, um, his own blend, and as I was there, an old chap pulled up in his car outside and um, he was like, oh sorry, that's John for his usual. John just pulled up, paid for his coffee, and it was hand delivered to him out of the shop. And that's what he does every week. Picks up his own special blend of coffee. Um, and so I picked him up the Honduras and the Colombian. And uh, well, they're for Ali really, because Ali just loves coffee. And if he likes them, it means that we can just put in our order and go and pick up roasted in Northampton um, coffee beans, which I thought was lovely. And then um, they also, in the cheese shop, had ice cream. This is Norfolk County ice cream, because Ali didn't have any ice cream the other day, so I picked him up enough supply. Salted it. caramel, mascarpone nice. and fig, coconut and cream, French vanilla, that, that one's for me, the French vanilla is for me, um, crema pistachio, Blueberries and cream. Mm -hmm. And that was that. And then I got us some old spot real ale chutney. Caramelized onion and red wine. Oh, so onion. is this all in that same shop? Yeah. This is the kitchen garden established in 1989. Handmade in Cotswolds. And I also got us some pheasant pate. And some cheeses. It's like a little Sweet. row of shops, and someone told me that they closed down. And it's amazing in there, absolutely amazing. The guy was so, so nice, he really was. Anyway, I need to go to the toilet. Sweet peas have been freshly picked. I've got so many out there. Um, these things are so handy. I ordered um, loads of these little bags from Amazon. They're not obviously the most decorative, but I just think it looks lovely to be able to take a little bag with some florals, like, oh, how cute, a little ruffly bag like that. So, that is our little gift. Let's get some wine. Good morning, everyone. This is a bit of a bizarre day. First of all, it's bizarre because um, the weather's just bizarre. It's not very warm. It's kind of sunny here and there, and I don't, I've not really known what to do with myself, but also, Ali is away, he left this morning for a trip and um, I just have, I feel like I have a to-do list as long as my arm and I really want to get like my house back in order. I also have some pots and plants that I need to refresh, even though I've got Gemma coming later on this week, I just want to like cleanse. Do you ever feel, <laughs> I love it, I'm like, do you ever feel like you just like need to cleanse your home? and that's what I need to do but the thing is because our house blurs with the outside so much it's going to sort of take me outside and inside and outside and inside so I think what I need to do first is, is give myself some brain food because um, putting things like logically in order for me is not something that I find very easy so I'm going to give myself my best shot, have a coffee, make my favourite thing to eat at the moment, then make a list and then hopefully, hopefully crack on with things. We are still looking after Monsieur Bolly. You can't see him, but he's just curled up over there. Um, because his mum and dad are having some renovations done at their house at the moment. And I think it's just probably easier for him, probably more relaxed, um, that he's here. And we love having him, and I love having him as well. Having a house of three dogs. Guys, I love it. I absolutely love it. The sun is coming out a little bit, but let's make some food. So. First and foremost, I'll do my little plant off of the island. Hello, Barkley. Oh, in fact, I need to get this particular planter outside because this is one of the ones that I was like, I need this. <laughs> Gemma is so good at putting things together. I wanted to add a bit of colour to the patio, so um, I 
stole, I didn't steal, I bought, I completely bought all of this stuff, this little planter that she's put together. There's Erigeron in there, lavender, just gorgeous. Oh, the purple Bacopa as well. And I think this is a flowering thyme. Oh no, it's not a flowering thyme. I don't know what that is, but it's stunning. Uh, right, I'm gonna pop this outside. This is what I am obsessed with eating at the moment. Basically, just a big bowl of blueberries and raspberries. Sadly, I only had three raspberries left. So um, I'm just making do with loads and loads of blueberries. Um, oh, it's so, so good. I then add lashings of yogurt because I'm able to have yogurt, which is so good um, because there's a lot of things that I'm not able to have that have dairy in them. A little drizzle of either honey from the bees here in the garden or some maple syrup just for that sweetness, just a little drizzle to sweeten up the, the yogurt. Probably my favorite part, goji berries. Goji berries are a new obsession of mine. These are dried organic goji berries and they are so delicious. And from someone who doesn't like raisins, like I really, really don't like raisins, I feel like these are my version of raisins. Bit of color in there, I love it. Oh, I think I've probably got too many out, but never mind. Just a few more won't hurt, there we go. <laughs> now, I would usually also add some chia seeds, but unfortunately we have run out. So this is what I'm going to have for some brain food. Super easy, so delicious, and it's, for me, a really great way of adding more fruit to my diet in this way, so gorgeous. Perfect, perfect, perfect. In fact, I'm going to write my list whilst I'm here. I love the way the dogs let me know when someone is here before they've even got out of the car. You have so many little balls all over you, Bonnie Moo. Oh, in your ears. Okay, we're gonna to have to get those out later on. You've been in the woodland. You've been in the woodland, yes. Yes, oh. Auntie Lydia loves having you here. This is another vintage piece that I ordered, well, pieces, um, that I found on John Lewis. No, you can't have my breakfast. Um, they're by Susan Kaplan, and they're a beautiful pair of gold-plated, flower earrings with pearls in them. And I'm really getting into earrings at the moment. Oh my goodness, they're so gorgeous, but they have been bent in the post. Oh no. Oh no, I think that they might break if I put them back. Let's just try. I don't want to weaken the metal. I am enjoying shopping vintage so much more than new. Wow. I'm gonna try them on. Anyway, back to what I was doing. I couldn't wait, so let's try these on. <laughs> Bending them back a little bit. So what I wanted was um, like more of a stud version of the um, Jennifer Bear ones that I've been wearing with white linen shirt dresses and things like that. Something maybe not quite so um, statement, but still a little bit statement. And um, I didn't want to get anything new. So I bought these vintage ones. And yes, by the way, I have disinfected them before I put them in. So don't worry. They were 45 pounds, gold plated, which means I can wear them really easily. And the little pearl detail. detail. Oh, I'm wearing these for the rest of the day now. Love. I have already started organising a little bit. I've just refilled the ice trays in the freezer so that I've got cold water. I've refilled my little Stanley that's from Elizabeth Arden. And I think I'm going to start out on the terrace though and get that kind of organised and then start moving any plants out that need to be repotted and start from there. Now, <laughs> I was going to cut this bit out. Now there's a fly right in front of you, the camera. I was gonna cut this bit out, but I actually think that this was a really useful little nugget that blew my mind. So just in case you don't do it, um, it saved us so much on poo bags and I thought I'd share it with you. I can't believe I'm doing this on my channel, but here we are. So you get two poo bags and you have one poo bag for picking up 
and putting into the other poo bag. It means that you just get one massive full bag of poo when you do a pickup. Can't believe I'm doing this on my channel. I apologise, but I hope that helps. And then I just put that one bag in there. Whereas when I was just going along like this and picking them up, there's only so many I could get in my hand. And so I was going through the bags a lot quicker. And obviously, even though they're compostable and that kind of thing, it's just better to use less, I guess. So it might change the game for you, it might not. I would usually not put this in, but I think it would be helpful because it was super helpful to me. Now it is time to do some serious deadheading. Even though the verbena is coming through beautifully, we desperately need to get on these roses. So that is my next task. Also, I did just want to preface and just say that I do know that that will be old news with the poo bags to, pe to some people, but it was new news to me and it was probably new news to you once upon a time. And so if anyone has recently got a dog and they're just wanting a, a better way to be efficient and they don't know, it's just a little nugget of information, so hopefully it's helpful. One of the things I'm trying to get a lot more efficient on is deadheading my roses because I've not been very good at it. I think what would be a really, really good practice would be to, when you're just having a walk around the garden, whether it's in the morning or in the evening, just do it there and then and get it out of the way. Um, one of the things that I've always been a bit confused about, sorry if you can hear the wind, is how to deadhead. Ooh blustery is how to deadhead them properly and the most simple terms that I can tell you because sometimes I think it gets a bit complex is basically wherever the dead bloom is track it down the stem until you find the first set of five leaves it has to be five leaves and then angle cut to the five leaves make sure that those leaves are facing outward of the plant otherwise it will uh, grow inwards and just make sure you do the angle cut use good shears like this and just stay on top of it i think that's the reason why we suffer so badly with black spot on our roses so it's something that i'm trying to do a lot more of so time to tackle a few more okay 14 what's wrong my love oh you're bald <laughs> Honestly, this dog is so special. He was just letting me know by crying at the at the um, lounger that his ball had gotten lost under there. He was like, oh, I'm like, what's under there? And I know to look because he does always let me know when he wants something. Barkley's not quite so clever, but bless them. Everything has been deadheaded and pruned. I've pulled up as many weeds as I humanly possibly can on my own. Now I'm gonna get all of the cushions out ready for the week because I want it to look lovely out here. Then I'm gonna start potting up plants out there. I need to sweep the patio as well. Um, and it should start to look a little bit more presentable out here.
cushions are out now I'm going to sweep the patio I, I am like really really particular about how the patio looks I can't bear it when there's like little bits of mud and things like that so oh look at all the bumblebees enjoying the flowers but yes I'm gonna give it a good sweep and get the final two sun lounger cushions out and then I think we're mostly done I need to do the kitchen garden next Apologies um, if you can't hear me, but I am going to go in and deadhead my geraniums. Um, these are super easy to deadhead. You just snap them off at the nodules. I'm just taking these ones off because they're looking a little bit brown and giving them um, a new lease of life, I think. So down to the nodule, snap, and it just gives more space. In fact, some, some more of these can come off, I think. Yeah, down to the nodule, snap, and down to the nodule. I think. Let's just do one more. Because this has some buds coming in. There we go. Just a little bit refreshed there as well and a little bit more light getting to things. Just take any of these ugly browning leaves off. Give it a refresh. I might give this a water as well. Also planned out to these pots. I'm going to remove the trio of topiaries and I'm just going to plant up some of these flowers into these beautiful pots that I got from Hello Petal. They're from Berg's Potter. They have this stunning rope detail to the tops and I'm just going to keep it simple and tie in the purples and the whites um, on the table as well. I think these look really really nice. So let's pot these up but first I'm just going to water these plants because I think they need it. My little outdoor potting station is a little bit overrun at the moment um, but I'm just going to get this potted up and on the table and have a little bit of a rejuge inside. Now it is time to tackle the kitchen garden and I never thought I'd say this but I have too many sweet peas. Oh my gosh. Um, the one thing I would say is that, a happy little honeybee there, um, the one thing I would say is that I'm wondering whether my stems are so long because I actually planted my sweet peas without letting their roots sort of mature in bigger pots. They just went out as tiny, tiny seedlings without any sort of root system. And I'm wondering whether that's what helped, but I don't know. I've just got, I love the fact that they've got such long stems because I can make real sort of big bunches with them. One over here has gone wild. I'm going to need to string this up, but I've got pink ones now as well. I've got lighter lilac ones. So I'm thinking that there's been some cross pollination going on from my monge too. A lesson for next year. I have really loved having some different colors so um, maybe all was not lost but I think I'm going to do a big harvest of sweet peas now. Also getting very close to having our first courgette. Um, I'm going to start harvesting them a little bit earlier. Usually I let them get really big but the big ones are really are, are super good for making um, courgette risotto or marrow risotto but the little ones are probably going to be very very tasty.
time to harvest these sweet peas and string them back up as well because they are not looking very good at the moment. Sweet peas are harvested and ready to take inside, but before I do that, I'm just gonna string up my cucumbers as well. These are my cucumbers. Look how much they've blooming grown. I actually can't believe how much they've grown, to be honest. And they are self-attaching, but I'm just gonna give them a bit of a helping hand. Um, these three are all doing really well. This one's a little bit of a strange one. It's like a little bit far behind, but um, I don't necessarily mind. Hopefully it means that we'll get a bit of, I don't know, succession, who knows. Um, but I'm just going to work on... The, although they look like they're doing quite well in terms of support. Like this one's supported here. This one is kind of supported there. So I think they're all right at the moment. And then it's attached itself here. Hmm. I think they're okay. Being as those don't need doing, I'm going to give the floor in here and the surfaces a bit of a brush down because um, it gets a little bit messy and I think it needs it. And then it means I can water tomorrow morning without worrying that it's all gonna to stick to the floor. So it works well. but I haven't even started on the house yet and I think I'm gonna give all my lemon trees a bit of a feed. So, not the house yet and I don't even know what time it is. I don't know where my phone is. I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> just about thinking that I've finished off in the greenhouse with everything watered and then I realized I haven't done my seeds from my cosmos and I'm probably going to need to deadhead those as well so just when you think you're finished you always haven't in the garden so I'm just going to quickly grab a tin and pop these into one of the tins for gifts Absolutely not doing any more jobs outside after I've done this. <laughs> Time to deadhead the cosmos. Pardon all the noise, but I am going to uh, deadhead these cosmos. Now there aren't too many here, but I thought I'd tell you how I do the deadheading on these as well. So basically I just follow the stem right to the bottom where the other sort of bloom or bud is and I just snip it right at the base there. And I just save these for when I want to take the seeds out later on so the same is done here straight to the base snip on this one however there's loads so i'll give this one a good cut back well it's been a very busy day in the garden 
and it looks like I've done absolutely nothing. <laughs> oh gosh. Dear me. Right, time to tackle the kitchen whilst we do dinner. Isn't that right, Bolly? As you can see, there is stuff absolutely everywhere in the kitchen. Just bits not been put away, not organized. It just needs to have a real like, I need to just take everything off the sides, everything that I don't want in here and put it in one place and then sort through it that way. That's always my best sort of hack with these things is to just grab everything that's in the wrong place and then sort through it and find it its place. So that is what I will start with. with uh, so that is what I will start with. If it looks like I've got white eyeshadow on, it's because I've popped a layer of Lano on my eyelids. I don't know what's going on, but you know, I used to get um, eczema on my eyelids. Well, it's like flaring up and itching. So I popped some on because that stuff is just incredible. I've popped it over here. So it's to hand. If you've got eczema, like small amounts of it, I put this on and it soothes it straight away. Um, I'm probably gonna have to keep reapplying though because it's just drank it up. So anyway, time to blitz the kitchen. I'm so tired, <laughs> but I'm enjoying it. This is good, good progress stuff. So yeah, Ooh. where it should be. So this is the automatic chicken door. <laughs> Well, the kitchen is decluttered and I've actually done loads of other things as well. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, there's just, there's just so much stuff. I need to get the boys a new bed. I put one of my things from Hello Petal up there with some rosemary in and I think it looks really nice. Um, lots of fresh greenery in here now. Um, this is the pile, the pile to sort through. Um, this is everything that was clustering everything up. Uh, there's candles, there's loads of bits that just need to be filed away, but it's gonna have to wait until tomorrow because I am absolutely pooped. I'm gonna sit on the sofa, my back hurts. Good day's work. Very, very happy about that. I'm very, very happy to have the dishwasher loaded. Washing has been done and folded. Garden has been done to a certain extent. I've got two things that I should have taken down to uh, the greenhouse, but I'm just not gonna have time to do that. I just don't have the energy. But tomorrow's another day. If I've got the energy, I will be doing it tomorrow.